Hey guys, welcome back to another Virgo Girl recommendation. All right, so today I am going to recommend Halston. Halston is a documentary about a famous designer from the 70s. Um, I think he did some stuff in the 60s as well, but I guess in the 70s is when he really, really got big. Let me start off by saying, when it comes to documentaries, I need something with a little bite. And what I mean by that is I don't want to see a documentary on someone who just has a normal life. They get married. They have 2.5 kids. They move into a house with a picket fence and everything is just smooth. I don't want to see that. I need sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that is exactly what this documentary gave me, Halston on Netflix. Okay, so first of all, it starts off typical little boy. He is more feminine <clears throat> and he takes more to his mom. Although he really loves his dad and wants his dad's approval, his dad was really very uh, aggressive and, you know, quite abusive toward him and his mom and his mom. So it kind of like set the tone for him to have these kind of mixed feelings toward his father. It's like he wanted so much to be accepted by his father. And one scene that um I that sticks out to me was he was it would you know he was standing by his father while his father was shaving and his father like allowed him to shave with him. And it almost was like that was the only time where they had like a bonding experience when they were doing something like shaving, you know, something that was more masculine and something that his father, you know, felt like, you know, he should be doing it, the, that Halston should be doing as a man. And well, he wasn't a man, but just something that he should be doing that was more like masculine, you know, basically. And instead of what Halston usually was doing, which was like, he used to make like hats for his mom. You know, he was doing things like, you know, coloring, I believe it was that they showed him doing at one point that his father was seemingly bothered by. And then let me go ahead and add. OK, so this was like a long, long time ago. So, of course, things people were not as open minded. Um, it was during like the 30s when all this happened. So when they were first, you know, like when the show first started, it showed like 1935 when Halston was going through all these things with his father. His father was being very aggressive with his mom. And, you know, Halston had to witness that. He also had to witness his father telling him to basically be more, you know, I guess manly, if you will. And so he went through all that as a young child and seemingly he wasn't able to experience his father in the way he wanted to experience his father simply because of how, you know, he, because he wasn't as masculine, excuse me, as his father wanted him to be. And also due to the fact that his father seemed to be just aggressive. I don't know what was going on with his father, you know, like why he was like that, but they did show his father being quite aggressive. And, you know, it was just quite a bit of drama when it came to his father. However, his mom, you know, like in these stories where you typically see it, when you see like a feminine boy, um, the mom, she really embraced him. She really supported him. You know, she gave him his wings, like basically told him like, they were like in um, a small town and she basically told him, look, you need to get out of this town. You know, you're too much, you're too big for this town kind of thing to kind of like, you know, in a nutshell, not in those exact words, but basically that's what she was saying to him. Like, you're more than this. And she was like encouraging him to go and fly, you know, go, you know, do other things. And he did, you know, he ended up going to, I believe it was Chicago. And then of course he went to New York, but even before that, I just want to talk about how this guy, you know, even though he went through all the things he went through as a child, I love how he just branched out and, you know, did his thing. They really didn't show um, a lot of the grind grind part. What they showed was, I guess, somehow Jackie Kennedy, the uh, president's wife back then, she ended up wearing one of his hats and that made him like popular and very famous and so that you know shot him up to stardom and then after that 
she stopped wearing hats because she wanted to like show off her hairdo and the hats just weren't at in as much anymore. And then it shows him going into fashion. So then he had, because of the fact that the hats weren't all that anymore, he had to branch off and do other things. And that he did. I mean, he really, really, really did his thing in the, in the fashion industry. He ended up getting into, um, women's fashions. He ended up doing a perfume. Um, and that perfume that he did, I guess it was just like one of the biggest selling perfumes of that time. And it just, he, he was just crazy, crazy successful and extremely, extremely wealthy. Okay. So that's that part. Now, when it comes to the drama side of him, of course, he was a gay man. And from, you know, like the way they told the story, I, they never showed him with a woman. So I take it that he was gay his whole life. Um, you know, he was just only strictly with men. That's all they showed. And it kind of showed how, you know, the relationships that he got into, you could totally tell that it was stemming from a lot of his you know, his hurt and his childhood trauma, you could tell that he was like searching for certain things with some of the relationships that he got into with some of the men. And then in other relationships, you can kind of see it to where he was just kind of like, I don't want to say being like his father, but he was being more like just cold, you know, where it was just like, you're just an object to me, you know, you mean nothing. And then whereas in other relationships, I saw him with men, he was trying to get something out of that relationship that he was missing, you know, from his childhood. And I personally, I say this a lot, I'm a firm believer in your childhood has a lot to do with the relationships that you form in your adult life. If you don't have the time, if you don't take the time to deal with that childhood trauma, a lot of times that trauma comes with you throughout your life. It can stay with you for the rest of your life if it's not dealt with. And I feel with him, a lot of that was present. And he got involved with this guy. It was obvious that this the, the guy that he got involved with was like not good for him and that this is the person that he should have just had for just a good time and then that's it. But he ended up getting into a relationship with this guy who was just like, terrible in the end and it just I mean even from the beginning when I first saw this guy I knew that it was not going to be a happy ending with this guy because just how he was and just how he moved and just how he kind of got Halston into a lot of you know like wild and crazy things and he one thing about Halston okay let me let me backtrack a little bit so when he was new and he was just getting started and everything, like newer in his career, there was a guy at, at his, uh, one of his employees was doing speed. And he was like, no, you get clean or you get out. You know, like he was so strict about it. He was not on, you know, doing any types of substances or anything like that. So at that particular time, it was like he was a totally different person. And then he ended up going to... Some, I don't know if he was like cruising. I don't know what he was doing. Like, I think that's what they called it back then, like cruising for like guys, but it was like a strip and there was like a bunch of guys. He ended up hooking up with this guy and the guy had him to sniff something. I don't know what it was, but, um, he had him to sniff something that was in like some kind of little wrapper, like, um, like he had to twist it, whatever it was to open it or something. I, I have no idea what it was, but he had him to sniff something. And then he was just like, after that, he was like, it was like, he was a different person. And before this, he was with this guy who seemingly was a nice guy. And I feel like that guy was more like boyfriend material. You know, he was more serious. He was more clean cut and everything. After that night with that guy, um, where he sniffed whatever, and he was out there hooking up with this guy, he ended up becoming wild. Well, this guy, I think it was the guy that he hooked up with that night, ended up sending his, you know, the guy who basically changed his life forever. He sent that guy to him and that guy, he had drugs and, you know, that guy was just wild, wild, wild. And, you know, had him doing all these drugs and stuff. And then he ended up becoming more, you know, living like a wilder lifestyle. And I 
of course, I'm recommending this, so I don't want to completely spoil it in case some of you haven't seen it. But here's the thing. What I got out of this is it's like you can, it's like he had everything, you know, like everything that he could have ever dreamed of because back when he was a kid, they weren't like rich or anything. He didn't have like all this money. He didn't have like a silver spoon in his mouth. This guy was grassroots. I mean, he actually built this multi-million dollar brand, you know, and he did it on his own, you know, and it was from his own creativity. That's what it, you know, he created this brand and it was amazing. But he also at the same time, he almost destroyed the brand because of all of his indulgences. And just, I think a lot of it was him trying to numb his pain from the past. A lot of it was, you know, just dealing with um, excess. You know, I think here's the thing. If you, it's kind of hard. Like if you haven't had millions and millions of dollars, you know, who are you to say what you would do when you got, when you get it? You know, none of us really know. I mean, you like to think you know yourself, but I feel like the more money people get, the more they really, I guess their true selves come out kind of, or, you know, the person comes out that, yeah, I feel like, yeah, the more money you get, you can kind of see like who that person really is. Because if you can deal with being a, a millionaire, billionaire or whatever, and still stay humble and still give back and still do the, th the right things, it kind of like says something about you. But if you get all this money and you just go crazy and you start cutting, you know, treating people horribly, you know, you start looking down on people, you start just being this horrible, horrible person. It's like, wow, is that, you know, your true self coming out? Or, you know, what is this kind of thing? But at any rate, with this guy, it was like he was just really, it was just an amazing, amazing documentary because it was just crazy to see how this guy built this multi, multi million dollar brand. And it also touched on how there were opportunities, like after he got so big, you know, he got like this almost godlike complex where, you know, people were giving him ideas and tips on, you know, things that he should, you know, look into doing and, you know, fashion things that are coming up. You know how trends change. And a lot of times when people are famous, you see that a lot with even actors and musicians and things like that today. You know, once they get so big, it's like they don't want to listen. And listen, it's like you were famous 20 years ago, but things have changed since then. And you need to get with the times. This is what's going on now. But a lot of times when people are so wealthy and they've been on top for so long, they don't want to listen to anything about this new new trend that's going on or whatever they feel like what they have going on is going to last forever and that's kind of how I saw it with him even though he was very 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 you know talented there came a time you know as the years went on that he needed to kind of like update his you know his styles and things and he also it also came a time where he kind of like almost seemed like he wasn't as inspired anymore. And when you watch the movie, you'll see what was really causing that. It was like caused by all these internal conflicts and all of these things that were going on. And then all the losses that he was having. And then a lot of them were due to his own personal, you know, I would say his own personal actions, basically, you know, and it's just the way he was treating people. So it caused him to lose like, key people in his life that he really needed, but he got such a big head. He felt like, at, you know, like he didn't really feel like he needed anyone, which was unfortunate, but much respect to him. I think the actor that played him, I don't know this guy. So I was going to say that the actor did an awesome job. I, the, the acting was really good on this. I don't know who, um, I didn't know Austin, but I did um, like Google like pictures of him and stuff. And I feel like the, he was a really good looking man. Um, you know, of course, very well put together. Um, it looks like, yeah, he looked like a fashion guy. So um, the guy that played him, you know, did a good job, you know, looking like he was, you know, pretty much the same type of, I guess, swag that this guy had too um, back then. I don't know. I had to Google him because I'd never seen him before in my life, but I Googled him and I think the guy pulled it off pretty good with the look 
And also I Googled the other people who were in the movie and a lot of them looked, you know, they did a good job with casting. I'll just leave it at that. But at any rate, this was a good documentary. And like I said, I am really picky when it comes to documentaries. This one, I have to be honest with you, I usually only recommend things that um, catch my eye and keep my attention just because... You know, that's important, of course. We have things to do. We're busy. We don't want to watch something. We don't have an hour to have to get into something before we feel like we like it. Also, on this one, I want to tell you, it is one of those Netflix miniseries. So, you know, it has episodes. So it's not just like one movie. It is like, a, it's a series. It's like a documentary, but it's a series. So it has like, I think it has like eight episodes. And then that's pretty much it. But at any rate, watch it. It's called Halston. It's on Netflix and it's an amazing documentary. If you like fashion, you're going to love this. And it, it also touches on, it's so funny. It touches on, um, he had a relationship with uh, Liza Minnelli as well, like a really good relationship. And it also touches on that. It's crazy like how he was like so, I mean, it was like he was before even like Studio 54 and all of that because it showed him actually going to Studio 54 when it opened up, like the, you know, like the opening night. So, you know, he was around like way back, even before, you know, Studio 54 opened. And then they showed him like going to Studio 54 and partying. And yeah, it was a lot. And they showed um, just, oh my gosh, they showed like Liza Minnelli and like some of her little, um, trials and tribulations they even touched on that just a little bit as well it was great it was great I didn't know um some of the things that happened with Liza Minnelli I didn't know you know about her either I didn't know that she had um those issues going on either so yeah just check it out it's a gem you won't be disappointed at all once again it's called Halston and it's on Netflix and until next time guys don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and thanks for watching peace